In the first half of this year, Samsung's performance once again collapsed due to the global semiconductor downturn. Compared to a year ago, its net profit plummeted by a staggering 95%, hitting the lowest level in 14 years and even worse than during the financial crisis. Even Korean media couldn't bear it anymore and angrily criticized, it is a disgrace among disgraces. Just a few years ago, Samsung defeated Qualcomm and Intel becoming the world's number one semiconductor company, which sparked celebrations in Korea. How did they end up on the cliff's edge and become like this? Recently, Samsung Electronics reported a third-quarter operating profit of 24.336 trillion Korean won, a decrease of 77.57% year-on-year, while its sales revenue was 67.40 for 7 trillion Korean won down 12.21% compared to the same period last year. Surprisingly, Samsung's semiconductor division, which they were proud of, suffered the largest loss. According to KBS, Samsung Electronics had a semiconductor division loss of 37.5 trillion Korean won in the third quarter of this year, adding up to a total loss of 89.4 trillion Korean won in the previous two quarters. In less than a year, Samsung has suffered a loss of 126.9 trillion Korean won in its semiconductor projects. In 2017, Samsung became the world's number one semiconductor company, occupying over 45% of the global memory market at its peak. However, just five years later, the semiconductor kingdom began to crumble. In 1999, Samsung developed and launched the first commercially available NAND flash memory. By 2002, Samsung became the world's first mass producer of NAND flash memory, surpassing Toshiba, and officially claimed the dominant position in the flash memory market. Even after Samsung gradually disappeared from the Chinese smartphone market, it still maintained its position as a leading global internet company through the profits from its storage business. However, due to the adjustment of supply and demand, not only did the prices of memory chips plummet, but there were even times when they couldn't be sold, resulting in a severe accumulation of inventory. Data shows that as of June 2023, Samsung's semiconductor inventory has exceeded 180 billion Chinese yuan. To reduce inventory, Samsung was forced to cut supply and attempt to restore the storage market to a balanced state. In July of this year, Samsung publicly announced its stock selection reducing monthly production of dynamic random access memory, DRAM, to 620. 000 wafers, a 12% decrease compared to the same period last year, marking a new low in production since the third quarter of 2021 for the company. Apart from the inability to sell old chips, the storage chip market is undergoing a revolutionary change. With the advent of the AI era and the popularity of large models, DPM and NAND storage chips are gradually being phased out to meet the high computing requirements of AI servers. The new HBM, high bandwidth memory, chips have become the mainstream. HBM chips are now the standard for AI large models, with Samsung's longtime competitor, SK Hynix, capturing over 50% of the market share. They have also collaborated with NVIDIA to develop AI chips such as H100 and H28 exclusively occupying 90% of the high-end market. Samsung is falling behind step by step, despite being the largest storage chip company. Samsung cannot reap the benefits of the AI era. They are left with a pile of unsold old storage chips. Ironically, Samsung's most well-known business, its smartphone division, has been the one contributing to their net profit. Aside from the continuously losing semiconductor business, this Samsung financial report still has some bright spots, particularly with a net profit of 5.5 trillion Korean won, far exceeding the previous expectation of 2.52 trillion Korean won. The year-on-year decline in profitability has improved from 86% in the second quarter to 40%. The better-than-expected performance is mainly due to increased sales of new smartphones and high-end display products. According to reports, the Samsung Galaxy S24 series will be launched in the third or fourth week of January 2024. 
Although it might not be the first AI large model smartphone, Samsung still considers AI as a significant feature for the XS24. Samsung has announced the CAI tool designed for Galaxy S24, which enables AI functions, such as text-to-image generation through XML2400 natively, and includes intelligent experiences like photo messaging and voice recognition. However, there have been negative reports about the power consumption and heat generation of Samsung's Orion processor, leading to multiple production halts. With the dual attacks of Apple's A17 PRO and Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8, the future of Exynos 2400 may not be optimistic now. Let's try to decipher the reasons and processes behind these developments. As we know, Samsung is South Korea's largest conglomerate, and its revenue accounts for a quarter of South Korea's GDP. In the minds of some Koreans, Samsung has the power to influence the country's economy. The semiconductor business, especially the storage chip division, is Samsung's cash cow. At its peak, Samsung monopolized over 45% of the global memory market, surpassing Intel to become the semiconductor leader and one of the most profitable companies globally unexpectedly. In just a few years, this giant that made many companies tremble has experienced a sharp decline in performance and has faced threats such as strikes and production reductions. Even the storage chip division has become the biggest burden for the company. According to Korean media data, it has already incurred losses of 12.69 trillion Korean won, equivalent to 688 billion renminbi in the first three quarters of this year, with inventory exceeding 180 billion renminbi. It is no wonder that the Korean people are deeply concerned about the fate of this company that is crucial to South Korea's future. There have even been online comments pleading for the relevant departments to take action and reverse the decline of Samsung and the Korean economy. However, Korean media are well aware of the situation. Despite various analyses from experts, they have always believed that the reason is simple, China is no longer buying. Or more precisely, Samsung has abandoned the Chinese market. In recent years, as the chip iron curtain continues to escalate. Samsung has firmly chosen to follow the Big Brother and join the Quad Alliance. This has resulted in a nearly 30% decrease in chip exports to China and multiple instances of cutting off supply and pressuring Chinese companies such as Huawei, which has dealt a heavy blow to Samsung in the short term. Furthermore, they made the decisive move of abandoning the Chinese market and going to the United States to build chip production lines aspiring to become an important part of the U.S. industry. Unfortunately, this move not only brought no benefits, but also caused a continuous decline in sales. According to Yonhap News Agency, for months after Samsung abandoned the Chinese market, its chip inventory surged by 40% and incurred a loss of over 460 billion won. The current predicament can only be attributed to their own actions. Losing the Chinese market and failing to establish a solid foothold in the US market, Samsung has suffered a double loss. At a time when the global semiconductor industry is experiencing a downturn and chip demand is sharply decreasing, Samsung's inventory has reached an unprecedented level of 265.7%. Facing the snowballing mountain of inventory, Samsung has finally awakened and wants to re-enter the Chinese market. They hastily announced an investment of 180 billion renminbi to build a factory in Lebanon, with an estimated annual output value of over 100 billion renminbi. Their subsidiary, SDI Battery, also announced the establishment of a research and development center in Shanghai. However, the Chinese market is not something that can be come and go as one pleases. China's own memory chip company, Changshin Memory, has long completed construction and started production with comparable technical capabilities. Now, if Samsung wants to win back the favor of the Chinese market, it won't be so easy. After all, regaining recognition from the Chinese market will depend on their sincerity. I in this respect, Samsung can learn from other predecessors. Ten years ago, Western companies, relying on their technological advantages, made a breakthrough in the then underestimated field of longevity technology and launched Pahlavi E-class oral capsules. They then set a price of 10,000 renminbi per gram, 
hoping to tap into China's market of 660 million middle-aged and elderly population. Unfortunately, although it has a significant effect on slowing down aging and strengthening energy, it has always been difficult for the general public to accept due to price limitations. However, Polovid regarded the Chinese market as a treasure. After receiving feedback from Chinese consumers, they actively conducted research and updated the formula with the new ingredient Mitolive TM, which acts on mitochondria. They also established a business relationship with the Chinese market and took the initiative to lower the price. Finally, they introduced it into the Chinese market through JD.com with a price of 1000 RMB.IT. Is reported that authoritative journals such as Science and Cell have repeatedly stated that the quantity and quality of mitochondria can have an impact on the aging process. Pallovi can increase the quantity and quality of mitochondria, thus exerting a positive effect on reversing aging. Data from relevant platforms shows that since the price reduction, it has been well received in first and second tier cities, with discussions about improvements in mental state and complexion. During the JD.com Double Eleven Shopping Festival, all 1,300 bottles were sold out in just 30 minutes. It has become a cutting-edge biological achievement that millions of ordinary people in second- and third-tier cities in China can enjoy. When you respect the Chinese market, the Chinese market will reward you. I believe many foreign companies have experienced this firsthand. The shrinking of Chinese exports has plunged Samsung into a semiconductor crisis, and many Koreans have expressed strong dissatisfaction with following the United States through online comments. Some even exclaimed in distress, is there still hope for us? However, I believe Samsung has also realized that to turn the situation around, it must regain the Chinese market. Building an industry often takes decades, while destroying it can happen in the blink of an eye. Since Samsung has made a choice, it must bear the corresponding consequences. Overall, Samsung is essentially a typical AI giant model that improves productivity, involving the most popular functions of text processing, coding, and image generation. Samsung has stated that Gauss will expand to various Samsung official apps in the near future. As the former leader in the storage field, Samsung has faced setbacks in the AA era with a large backlog of inventory for DFM and NAND storage chips, which are the pillars of its brand. High-value-added products such as HDM that are closely related to AI have been surpassed by old competitors, making the transition difficult. After losing one of its legs, Samsung can only rely on its mobile business. Although it has faced setbacks in the Chinese smartphone market, Samsung, which has always had a strong presence in Europe and South America, still has a chance to make a comeback. Let us wait and see what choices and developments Samsung will make in the future. Future. Future.